why not celebrate everything we just accomplished that no one thought we would? And we had we had a great time. Cause we gonna fuck, then we gonna fall, then we let it pop, don't let it go. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of the Bring the Juice Podcast. I am your host, Frank Delana. Today on the pod, all the way from Austin, Texas. <laughs> Longhorn pitcher. We used to know her as a Fresno State dog. She always will be Bulldog born, Bulldog bred. But she's big time now. Haley Dulcini, welcome back on the Bring the Juice podcast. Oh, thanks for having me back. Talk about a uh, series of events that has happened since your last episode on here, which was episode <laughs> four we talked about. We've, we're both growing. Yeah, what are we at now? Today is episode 49. Wow. Wow. Wow, we're hitting a year. Fifties <laughs> next, crazy. I hope we get there. We'll make it. We'll make it. Haley, let's just break it down real quick, okay? Uh, from Ferndale, California, a dairy town, some might say. Went to UC Riverside, then Fresno State, and you finished your career off at Texas as a Longhorn. A lot of the people listening are Bulldog fans. Let's just start. How hard was it? How hard was it to leave Fresno State? Like, what? Tell us. Drop, drop the grenade. What, what, what happened? Yeah, I mean, it was the toughest decision I think I've ever made. Really? You know, being like, I've loved the valley. I never envisioned leaving. Um, you know, I wanted to stay here after I graduated, and then COVID gave us this extra year. There was coaching changes. Tried to stick it out. It just was not working. Mm -hmm. um, tried to work through them, and then ultimately knew it was COVID year was a bonus year, and like. I wanted to make the most out of it. And so I knew I could graduate. And so I put myself in the transfer portal and then kind of talked to all these different schools right. and then ultimately decided Texas was the best fit. And then here we are. Was it because of like the coaches there, the atmosphere there, you were just like Texas forever or <laughs> what? Well, well, I mean, you had to have, there had to have been a selling point at some point. Yeah. I mean, I honestly, the schools that had offered me, I think I had 60 offers in the portal. And yeah. so it was like, to me, it was like just insane that that many people truly like wanted me to join their program, especially mid year. And being that it wasn't something long term, like I wasn't going to be able to help a program grow. It yeah. was going to be a short term yeah. impact. And so for me, it was like, how many pitchers do you have? Where do I fit in? Because yeah. like, let's say I talked to a different school and they had nine pitchers. I'm like, Hey, why do you want me then? Right. Like what's the point? And so at Texas, I was the only fifth year pitcher. Um, no one else was a rise ball pitcher. So it just worked out well. And I had come in with a lot of experience and a lot of innings. So they knew that I could do that for them. Right. And then it was just the perfect fit. Wow. Okay. So how like culture shock wise, like how different was walking into a Texas locker room the first time? It's insane. Um, I mean, we have amazing facilities here at Fresno state for being what they call a mid major, but then you go somewhere where it's like, Whoa. Money is zero object. Wow. And so it's like you have your own facility as a softball team. Like you have your indoor cages, your locker room, your team room, your nutrition lounge. Like we used to share a nutrition lounge with everyone. Like softball has their own. Wow. And like we shared a locker, or not a locker room, um, a weight room with baseball. Uh -huh. So it was like there's only two teams using it. So you're not worried about, you know, booking all these teams all day long. And then it's like, I mean, we're getting massages once a week. Right. Like chiropractor appointments once a week. Like it's literally anything you need, you want. It's like you have all the access to it. Do you think, I mean, you mentioned before the pod, like people thought you went to Texas for an NIL deal, even though NIL has only been around like a little over a year. You were kind of at the beginning stages of that whole situation. Do you think, let's say you had one more year and you wanted to go in the transfer portal. Do you think people would start bidding on you at other colleges just the way it's the wild, wild west around here? Yeah, I don't know if we're going to see that in softball. Like, we've seen it in football. For sure. You know, you've got I've other coaches yeah. calling them out, whatever it is, and all these donors are making sure these kids end up at the places they want them to. But, like, softball, I don't think you're going to see that from the boosters as much as you do football, like those larger-scaled sports. Um, right. But I think with it comes, like, oh, look at this program. We have to help our athletes with NIL deals. And, like, for me, I don't think it would have weighed into any decision. Yeah. Just because like even this year, like I could have taken advantage of it a little bit more, but it's like it takes time away also. Right. So like for me, it was I'm already moving to a new school, starting a master's program. Do I really want to spend all this time trying to, you know, make a video for like a different product for a little bit of money right. or would I rather just work on 
getting in the weight room, getting just on grinding, the field, figuring out how the team works together. So it was like, it was a lot of extra side work that I just wasn't willing to do. Yeah, I can see how that's a thing too. And like, I think some of the athletes I've talked to in this era, there's some guys that bring up cases and they're not playing right now. They're saying like, oh, if I was playing, this is what I would do. Well, shit, you're not in it. But there's guys that I've talked to that are in it and the coaches. I think there's kind of two sides to it. Yes, you can make money. But also, you know, I think there's the hum, the humility that people have of being humble and just saying like, hey, I I got to I got to perform like, yeah, sure. I'd love to make an extra little extra coin. But like I got my team's relying on me. I have a job. I need to be mastering my craft. I don't necessarily want to pass up money, but is that what's most important? And not everyone sees that. Some people just see the bag and. Hey, don't get me wrong. I'm always chasing the bag as well. Don't get don't get that twisted. But like, I I see where you're coming from there, and and I think you said you know you had a one and done year, and you said hey let's 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 make everything you can out of it as you did. So you know in my intro to you, I said from UC Riverside to Fresno State to Texas. Clearly, you just took a team, a Texas team. Um, you guys probably shouldn't have been in that World Series. You did not belong there, people were saying. Well, shit, you were there. So, but why? And and I don't want to call you the ace. I don't want to talk shit to other girls, but you were the you were the fucking ace. Why did you have to take that journey from UC Riverside to Fresno State to Texas? Why not just come from high school where you had all these no hitters and all these insane stats and go straight to Texas? What happened? Why wh- wh- where'd you get lost in the sauce? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, back then it was like there was no recruiting rules for softball. So it was everyone was committed when I was in eighth grade. Yeah. So everyone that I would email, like reach out to and like I didn't have, you know, highlight videos like that wasn't a thing. It was just you emailed a coach. Hopefully they came to your game. Right. Whatever team you were playing on. Well, I'm from a super small town where softball is not super, super big, let alone travel ball. And so no one looks at high school stats for softball. It's only it's, travel. It's only travel ball. That's really? all they want to see is like what level you're playing at. And so at the time, you know, I was just kind of local and then we'd travel down to Sacramento, but like in the, in the grand scheme of things, like just the traveling to Sacramento, the big time softball tournaments are all in LA. Uh-huh. So it was like, I started doing that my freshman year of high school, I think when, you know, the coach that I played under at Fresno, she had seen me and said, you need to get on this different travel ball team and start playing all of these SoCal tournaments. And so that started and I had, I mean, I only had two offers. Yeah. And so it was like, for me, I was super late to the party. So it was like UC Riverside is where that Fresno coach was and completely sold me on the program. I could make an impact on the program and everything was going to be covered. So I was like, great, figured it out, went there, you know, kept the same work ethic, just ultimately like was not happy not like a big city girl and then being 12 hours from home your freshman year is hard too and then yeah it was just a rough rough year like outside of softball i had success in softball just wasn't happy so ultimately and the portal wasn't a thing back then no so you had to request to transfer i was denied there was a year too that you had to sell right or something potentially yeah Yeah. and so i was denied and then like had to ask again had to give a specific list of schools and so Mm -hmm. then fresno called like almost immediately as i was cleared to go and I took my visit here with my parents and just fell in love with the Valley and then everything I had to offer. And then, like I said, had it not, had it not been COVID, like, I mean, we wouldn't be sitting here today talking about a world series. It's because I would have graduated in 2021 and been done with my career after four years. Cause I wouldn't have had that fifth year. Yeah. So, I mean, did, so did you technically have a COVID year in there too? Yeah. That's what this year was. This was my fifth. So this was the extra year I got. No. Right. Damn. Yeah. So, I mean, talk about positives with COVID, like Oh, I got incredibly lucky. Yeah. Wow. Okay, before we go any further, I got to give a shout out to our sponsors real quick. I know you worked with these people before, but um, Fresno First Bank is a newest sponsor of the Bring the Juice podcast. At uh, Fresno First Bank, it's a local bank to Fresno and to the community. They have a strong connection with business owners to help them grow and succeed. At Fresno First, they are never too busy for you. It's always direct contact when you walk in. They personalize the customer experience every single day. I walked in there multiple times. They're always smiling, asking, how can I help you? What can we do? Blah, blah, blah. 
the uh, social media guy that I work with, he's head of marketing. His name is Matt. He uh, hooked me up with a bunch of golf balls, some hats, some towels. I'm, I'm repping Fresno First Bank. Um, Fresno First, they just really understand the business and personalized procedures for each and every business owner. I'm not at the point in my businesses where I could use Fresno First Bank, but I would like to in the future. So shout out to Fresno First Bank. My other sponsor for the day is Dervos Deli. I don't know if you've been there since you've been back yet, but you need to go check out Dervos Deli. They got this chicken sandwich I've been raving about on the podcast. I know you listen to the podcast. You hear me talk about this damn chicken sandwich. Um, but they got a lot of other things on the menu as well. I uh, I think like in our era together at Fresno State, if they were a thing, it would be a staple. It'd be like, oh, should we go to Mad Duck, Wahoos, or Dervo Steli? Because the food there is through the roof. It's just a matter of getting them the exposure. This week, actually, I'm going to Dervo Steli with like 25 dudes from the Fresno State football team. Uh, we're gonna have a little little sandwich party in there. So love it. You know. Shout out to Dervos. Go to Dervos. Go to Dervos. Hit up the boy Dervos. Um, you know, Haley, I was just thinking like, why you, you, we, I was listening to the bustle of the boys earlier today. They were talking about superstitions. Okay. So before we get into the superstition part of that, you're such a ace of a pitcher. You've done so well. You're so laser focused on ESPN. You look so laser focused. What's your like normal pregame routine and when does that start the night before the morning of rip it yeah i mean this year was different than like it's ever been because i was like cut down like before when it was like fresno it was like insane same breakfast every morning same smoothie every game day like at the same my, time not same time but like it was i had a game day sweatshirt like didn't uh -huh. matter if it was 95 degrees we were up in the hoodie um from the order I would put like my socks on, my pants, my locker room, like just when it, I had to be the first one out. And then yeah. like, it was just so much stuff to the point that I got to Texas and I was like, you've been at this level for how long? Right. Like, this is not the reason you're doing well. It's not because you had the same bagel every morning. Right. And so I just kind of was like, I mean, it wasn't necessarily like a superstition, but just listen to my music, whatever it was like. Same songs. Sometimes, Same yeah. Same playlist. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> same order. Um, but yeah, it was really just that. And then like the same person would put like my ribbon in my hair and nobody uh -huh. else would tie it. Um, like little things in like the order of how I went about like right. warming up, who would catch me. Um, you know, everyone knew I kind of had to stand on the outside of the circle. I had to have like, I had to be on the field first where I stood in the dugout like every single time. So it was just little things like that. I totally get that. As... As you, and I, I love how you said like person ties the bow in your hair, people do these things. Cause in my athletic experience, like I have some weird stuff that in like, sometimes you don't, it's, you didn't just come up with it, but it, worked it just started <laughs> happens. So, okay. So let's talk about it. So like you have your traditions, but as you guys, and we'll get into this next, like you guys have this run, you guys get hot at the right time. Because you guys weren't ranked going in, right? No. You guys were unranked and bullied your way into the College World Series where you played ultimately one of a, a really, really good Oklahoma team. Okay. As you started getting hot and you're pitching and you're throwing just darts, how did those, that routine, that su little superstitions, did any of them kind of start getting more defiant? Like, hey, this is working. Like, let's, <laughs> let's just keep it going. Like any of them, or did you just like say, Hey, I'm it's worked game one. It'll work game 31. Yeah. I think they're all thrown out the window. Cause at that point it was like, especially once we got to the world series, it was like, just enjoy the moment. Like yeah. it didn't matter. Like we weren't supposed to be there. And so we were like, if we lose both games, like who cares? Like right. we're not supposed to be here. So we were just like playing free and enjoying it. And then it was like, that was what we were missing in the parts at the beginning of the year where we were doing terribly was like, the pressure was we were like, Oh, all carrying the world on our shoulders. Yeah. And so then we got there and we're like, not many people get to say they've ever been right. So then as we kept continuing success and it was like, we're playing in the national championship series. We are not supposed to come close to winning a game. Like, but we're here and nobody else is Yeah, like, we're the ones playing them. And so whatever anybody else ha has to say about it, we don't really care because we're the ones in the dugout. They're not. What is the, so, I mean, the mentality of pitching as itself, 
are you going through um, the batting order before a game? Are you saying, I'm just going to go out there. I'm going to deal. They have to hit my shit. I mean, I don't care who the hell comes up to bat. I am going to strike them out. Or are you you're kind of saying like, hey, this girl, uh, she swings and misses every time on this pitch. Are you, are you doing that much research? Or are you just going out there and dealing? It's a little bit of both. I mean, like we have, once again, so many resources to where like we had this, I don't even know what you would call it, like application almost, where it was like you go on there, you type in the hitter you're about to face, and it's like it shows their spray chart where their tendencies are. Uh, right. First pitch, what percentage are they swinging at? What percentage are they not? Uh, screwballs against them how many times are they hitting them fair how many times are they fouling them off like it's giving you every single piece of data that you could need Uh and so it's like i would go through that i would watch film and then at the end of the day it's like i'm gonna trust that my best stuff is better than your best swing right so it's like that's i mean you can do all the all the scouting you want but if you don't have like that mentality when you go out there of like yeah, I am better than you, then right. you don't stand a chance. No, you ha- I mean you have to you have to walk around with the ultimate confidence when you're playing sports. And that's that is included in every stage. So if you have that mentality regularly as you pitch, was there nerves once you guys got to the actual World Series? Yeah. I mean, like the first game UCLA, it's like nerves in the sense of like, not oh my gosh, I hope I don't do bad. Right. It was like Holy cow, there's 13,000 people here. Right. Like, is that different? It was insane, but like in a, in the best way possible because right. they're all sitting above too. So they're not like in your face. Uh-huh. Whereas like the week before we're at Arkansas, you have 4,000 people like right there. And so it's, I mean, it can be intimidating if you look at it that way. Uh-huh. But for us, we're like, the game's grown so much. So just in that aspect of it all, it was like, we just enjoyed whoever the fans were. And so it was just, that was the only little bit of nerves was just like, okay, there's 13,000 people here. Or there's a million people watching on TV. Right. And I mean, for me, like nerves in the sense of I'm kind of gassed out at this point of the year. So uh-huh. it's like, we're going to see how long I can last and how many pitches I can throw and just kind of go from there. I was going to pivot into that. So I don't play softball, but it seems like you threw a lot of pitches. How... First of all, like, were they asking you, like, hey, can you go? And were you like, yeah, let's, like, fuck yeah, like, let's fucking roll. Like, I, I'm good. Even though you're kind of like, I'm I'm good. Like, I'm good. You're saying it, but, <laughs> I mean, we've all been in those situations. If you're an athlete and you're – a big moment is approached. And there's a difference to being hurt and injured. And then there's, like, this other thing just, like, it's wear and tear over the season of fatigue – um, I don't believe you could play injured. I think if you have a, if you tore your hamstring in half and you're a sprinter, you're, you're not, done. you're not, it's yeah. just not going to happen. And as an athlete, it's mentally extremely difficult to be able to accept that and just be like, I, I can't go right now. And it's not like you're playing in a high school game where you're like, you know what? I'm 85%. I'll get the job done. Like, yeah. no, you're playing at the highest stage at the highest level. Shit. We watched you on ESPN. Like, it's not just something you could suck up and go completely. So what were you thinking from a health standpoint as the season was progressing? Not only the season, but should you've been playing softball a long time. You played a lot of college softball alone. Like you said, you've had a lot of innings. Did the health factor start creeping into your head? And like, if so, like when? For me, I think like Washington, that regional, because it was like, We'd beat Weber State. I didn't have to pitch in that game, which was huge for us. Our coaches were like, we do not want you to go into this game. We're trying to save you for Washington. Okay. Pitched, we beat them. And then the next day, we just had to win one game to go to Supers, but we ended up losing by one run. Mm. So then we're sitting there kind of after the game, and it's a little bit emotional in the sense of like us seniors are like, hey, if we lose this next game, we're done. It's winner, go go home. And so he like kind of looks around, and at that point, I was in pain. I had like a leg injury. My arm was tight. Like it it was bad, and he's like, you've got the ball again. And I was like, all right, let's go. Like, yeah. absolutely. Like, anything I have left in the tank, I will leave out on that field. Because for me, it was like, what do I have after this? Yeah. You know, like, if we make it to Supers, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to grind through it to try and get to World Series. But if we don't, like, what am I saving my arm for? Right. And so then it was like, I mean, they were taking me out. As soon as I was done pitching for that inning, they would take me to their back facility. We had our massage therapist come down. She'd be working on my arm. Our trainer's working on my leg. Like, they're resetting my hips. Like, 
it was just kind of everything that was like, all right, we're doing whatever we can, like yeah. we're pushing through it, pushing through it. And then when the run sport comes through, it makes it easier. And then, I mean, the feeling of winning after is worth it all. But then, you know, Arkansas first game, I go five innings, I think. And we just weren't playing great softball and we were down by three. So I came out and then the next day he's like, you good to start? And I'm like, yeah, because same thing. It's one game. You either win yeah. or you're done forever. Right. And so that's the number two offense in the country. And I'm like, all right, kept the ball in the park the first night. Like I knew, I knew I was not going to strike people out. Right. Like I knew I was at that point with my arm that I didn't have the same speed, the same movement that I had had earlier in the year. And so it was like just attacking each pitch. And then our defense made like the best plays they could have made in those situations. Right. And so it was like, that's the game where, I mean, like you watch an ESPN zooming in on me, like crying in the dugout. Cause like, we're trying to hide me. Right. They're rubbing my arm out. We're, we don't think there's any cameras that can find us. And they're like, oh, she might be coming out. And there was a lot of people upset that our coaches did not take me out. But it was like he said, it was a mutual thing of like our trainers like, no, she's going to keep going. And I was like, you are not to take me out of this game. And he's like, he was a pitcher himself. Right. He understood the severity of like, you'll know when you're done, done. Like when you cannot throw a pitch, you'll come out. Yeah. So it was like we win that game. And then the next day he's like, can you go? And I'm like, absolutely not. Yeah. Like there's just because I would love to, but for the greater part of what the team needs, I was not that. Yeah. And so our freshman stepped up in the biggest game of her life. And then it was like, it was real. We were going to the world series. And so that's when like, we had all said like, everyone's going to leave it all out on the line. We go two and Q. Great. Right. We don't. And we win a few. Awesome. But I don't think anybody even pictured us going to the actual championship finale. No, not at all. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's a lot. Yeah. Holy shit. <laughs> That's just like the physical, not even like the mental. Well, okay. Like so like the mental, like you're, yeah, physically it hurts. The readjusting your hip. Be, you know, at, when you get to a certain threshold in athletics, you do get the old, you know, they'll, they'll throw a shot in you and say, they'll give you a slap on the ice and say, all right, let's go. Like, and, and not in this, they're not pushing you out there, but your inner competitiveness and your, your adrenaline and you're just this high to win, it just takes over. There is, I mean, any athlete listening to this understands the adrenaline that kicks in, the the grit and want to of just succeeding, and then just your overall heart takes over. And you'll do whatever it takes. And if they're if they're gonna pull you out, if they're gonna beat you, they're gonna have to kill you, dude. And that's just that's just the reality of shit. Yeah. I don't I don't know what to say. So that's the physical side mentally i mean when he said yeah you're good like you had the maturity to say on one of those times no i can't go but how was how was it mentally throughout the whole journey yeah i mean i think it was like hard balancing like i mean like after that first washington loss when it's like we're at their home field they're supposed to win this regional i think it was like hard to balance your emotions in the sense of like you know, this is everything you've worked for and it's coming down to one game. Right. And so it's like, you know, will this be the last game I actually get to step out there for? Uh -huh. Like the emotion side and balancing it out with like, if you're going to get too emotional, you better step off the field because yeah. you're not ready to go compete. And so it was just about literally taking it pitch by pitch because I mean, if you're thinking about the end result, you're already, you're already done. Right. You celebrate too soon, you're done. You don't worry about it. Same thing. So it's like, that was a grind in itself, balancing the emotion side. And then once we got to supers, it was like a complete toss up. We were not even supposed to come close to those games either. So we were trying to focus on just like enjoying it and having fun. But like everyone's also so competitive to where like fun takes it so far. Yeah. Like you play more loose when you're having fun and that's what we tried to do. But like the mentality of pushing through when your arm is like, like it's shooting pain down your arm. Like you're like out there shaking it, trying to get feeling back. And it's like, Okay, please. And then like someone has a 21 pitch at bat and it's like, okay, for God's sake, get out or get a hit. Right, like, right. <laughs> pick one or the other. And so it was like my pitch counts were just getting so high and it's like, same thing. It's like mentally, I've worked for everything up to this point. Uh -huh. So I'm not going to take myself out of this game because no. like I said, I'm not leaving anything in the tank. I'm not leaving any regrets out here. And so I think that was the whole mentality was like, there can be zero regrets because then you'll also look back on your career and be like, well, what if? Right. And I never wanted the what if. Can't do that. No. You mentioned, you know, you guys kind of rode the wave of it being fun up to a point. I mean, we were both college athletes. We were college athletes together. You got to, I think it's very hard, <clears throat> very hard to win a game in any sport you do. 
how did you and the Texas softball team like what was the biggest party of the season? Like what was the like <laughs> what was the like holy shit we have to go celebrate this. What and like what what you guys do? Like how how far off did you guys go? I mean, we we made sure to appropriately celebrate, you yeah. know, the big moments. Um but I'd say like us seniors that were done once we got back from the World Series and it was like we joked around. We're like first place losers. We got a sign. Like <laughs> we were just living our best lives because we also, I mean, you know how it is. It's like, you're never going to be teammates with these people again. Yeah. You don't get to, you know, be roommates and be like, all right, you ready to go to practice. And then it's like, you're going through the highs and lows and you know, you're in the locker room every day with traveling. Yeah. Like traveling. That everything that like you take for granted almost is like, you do. We were just like celebrating. We're like, this is one of our last nights together. Right. Like, why not celebrate everything we just accomplished that no one thought we would? And we had we had a great time. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? That is funny because I think I think an athlete at any level, even if it's like your your senior year of high school football and you're you're not going to play college, your boys, you're gonna go and you're gonna enjoy yourself that night. You're gonna have a good time. You're gonna be responsible. But <laughs> but like I, I think about my last game ever and it's just like, dude, it, it sucks. You're so emotional. I don't even think about my last game ever. I think about the class ahead of me at Fresno State for football. We were, uh, we just finished the, pretty much the trifecta. We won the Mountain West Championship, then went and won the Vegas Bowl. Oh, the Vegas Bowl's fun. Vegas Bowl's <laughs> fun. And it's like, we were on the bus ride home because we drove there. It yeah, was cheaper. I remember. <laughs> and for these seniors, like to get to end your career on that, a 12 win season, the most winning thing in Fresno State history, you won the Mountain West in like the most dramatic way possible at Boise. And then you go on to top it off and beat a Pac 12 team in the Vegas Bowl, which we weren't supposed to be in. And it's just like, wow. And the bus ride back. You know, there's Hennessy bottles, there's freaking <laughs> Coors Light, there's all the good stuff. But I think, and they divide the buses up in like offensive skill, like linemen, defensive. There's like seven buses to take a football <laughs> team because everyone needs leg room and shit. And I just remember in the dark driving through, you know, the border of California to Nevada, guys are just like happily crying, like telling them like, <laughs> dude, like, I probably would have never met you or been friends with you if I didn't have to be on the same football team as you, but I do. And I do, you know, I appreciate you and I love you. And you do have a good, a, a spot in my heart because of it. And I mean, dudes who like don't show emotion are expressing themselves. And, you know, your last game ever as an athlete at a, at a sport you're extremely competitive at, it's, it's a, your heart's in a, a very pretzel situation or you're happy because you did the damn thing. Mm -hmm. You're sad because it's over. But at the end of the day, it's like, you know, your mom and dad are proud of you. Like, you repped the family name. You did your thing. Um, not much more you could ask for. Not everyone's given these opportunities. You, no. you were, I mean, you were given a, a hell of an opportunity and you took advantage of it. And that's, that's so rare to see these days. And, and it's some of the best years of your life. Oh, it is the best years. Like, I mean, it's so fun. That's what I think is like, I told my, I told my parents the other day, cause like, obviously as soon as it was over, you know, I got, it was nice enough that the coaches waited till everything died down to take me out of the game, give me a standing ovation in the whole stadium. Uh -huh. And so it's like, you're just sitting there fighting back tears, walking back to the dugout. Like that was the last time I will ever step foot on that field as a player. Right. But I got to do it at the biggest stage. So I'm like also so grateful I got to end it there. Yeah. Because we were like, we can't even be sad in the sense like we extended our careers to the max. Oh, you Everyone else was watching on their couch. Yeah. You know, we got to actually go play in the last games of the season. And so then it's like your parents are like crying because it's like you've gone through this journey with them. They've sacrificed so much and then they get to watch you go do what you've worked so hard for. Yeah. And then you're like, there's that realization of, okay, it's really over. Like it's it's done, and so like me and another teammate, we left our cleats out there at home plate while they're out there that. celebrating. And Iconic. We're like, we left it all out there, and it was like one of those things that it's a tradition at some places, and we're like, we're doing it. Yeah. I mean, Shit. Why not? If not now, when? Exactly. I'm just gonna toss them in the trash anyway. Yeah. So they if can not do it me, for then me. who? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. I mean, that's awesome. So like, how is the, you know, 
the game of softball itself. I felt like just on Twitter, like you blew up on socials. You were trending. Like, how good was this postseason, not only for you and your personal self, but I feel like the game of softball is on the rise right now. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's been on the rise for, I'd say, the last, like, three years especially. But, I mean, like, every year it's, like, topping out for viewership. Like, Mm -hmm. the peak viewership was 2.1 million viewers for the World Series. Right. Insane. The Arkansas Super we were in is the most watched Super Regional ever. And so it's like, then you compare it to baseball. Because, I mean, that's kind of our comparison sport. Arkansas is super regional for baseball. They had 600,000. Really? We had, I think, 1.4 million. So it's like just even looking at that difference and nothing against the baseball players. They're great at what they no. do and everything. But people will turn on a softball game and they see how fast-paced it is, how gifted everyone out there is. And it's just fun to watch. And it so I think once watch. people watch it, they're like, okay, wait, I'm kind of hooked. And then once they start watching the same team, it's like, well, now they're going to follow that team and now you have fans. Right. So. I think the buildup of what they've been doing at this level has been great for viewership. I mean, we're playing on ABC. Right. We played on there twice, which is like huge. I mean, you never would have seen that. You didn't see it two years ago, let alone 10 years ago. And then just seeing, I mean, when our alumni were all there, they're like the changes that have been made from when they played in it to when we're playing in it and just how many people you go out and talk to. And they're like, oh my God, I never watched softball. And I started watching the World Series because it was on at a bar. And I love it. I can't wait for next season. And so it's like, it's just awesome that we're finally getting the recognition that has been deserved for all the girls that have played before. But like, it's, it's, it's starting up. to surpass a lot of other collegiate sports. So it's yeah. just exciting to see. Well, I mean, I, I mean, I'm not a huge woman's sports viewer, but <laughs> I definitely have watched more softball than basketball or soccer or lacrosse or. I don't even know what else there is, but like, I mean, I know those are the ones out there. Don't get mad at me, but like I softball, like you could kind of, I think it's cause it's its own game. I yeah. think it doesn't get compared like women's basketball gets compared to men's basketball. Uh, women's soccer gets compared to men's soccer track. They're not as fast as the men. Like there's kind of like this hand in hand comparison. And like you said, like, yeah, softball is compared to baseball. Um, but it's not because like everything's a little, it's, it's different enough to be like, okay, like I could see how this could be more difficult. The mound is closer. The baselines are shorter. The fences are closer. Like the ball is bigger. The bats are a little different. Like there's some, sh- there's some, there's some shit in there <laughs> where it's like, this is different. And I think as a man, I can't. Like I've I've played in basketball games, I've played in baseball games, I've played in soccer games. Like I kind of know what's good and what's not. I've never played in a real softball game. I don't know how hard it is when you when you throw a, a riser. Like I don't know what it looks like, and it's you're closer. So, and I think they had on ESPN one of those nights you played like, um, one of your fastballs is the equivalent to this at a, oh, as a, yeah. as like a baseball fastball yeah. or something, and people are throwing some gas like. I mean, it's hard to hit a – I mean, if you've never hit a fast baseball, go to your nearest batting range and put it on – start on 50, okay? Yeah. And then go to 60. Then go to 70. By the time it's 80, you're going to be like, holy shit, get me out of this batting range. I'm going to get ear hold right now. It's going to hurt. Yeah. Like, it takes some talent. Like, I have an argument on what sport is the hardest on this show. Oh, yeah. <laughs> or the grittiest. And yeah, it's I like, that. I think every sport has some gritty things, some gritty aspects – Hardest things to do in sports, like specifically, one of them is hitting like probably a baseball or softball. Like realistically, it is one of the hardest things to do in sports. And, you know, that's just one of my takes I got to say on that one. Yeah. But, um, yeah. All right. I want to go back to the superstitions real quick. (laughs) You had not one superstition in your whole entire athletic career of like, holy shit, this worked because like, okay, when was your first no hitter? High school. Yeah, my dad and I went to the same place for breakfast. Okay, day. see, that's what I'm saying. Like, you're, you're, like, we're talking too broad. I mean, I, I remember in my career, there's a couple of coaches that could abide to this, but we used to run a few of these plays in the red zone, and I would stand with my left foot on the coach's box. I did it like four times, and we scored a touchdown every time, to the point where they were like, like, I wasn't over there when we needed one, and they're like, hey, Frankie. 
put your fucking foot right here. And they would stand like behind me because that's where they were standing when it would work. So oh, we do that all the time. There's so much like, I mean, if it's working, keep doing it. That's my best like, advice we did to this, athletes. We said this when she was up last time. She went yard. Say it again. Right. Or like if someone started like, you know, softball, they do like the cheers and stuff. Sure. If someone started it and it didn't work, you zip it. Uh-huh. You don't say a yeah. word. And then, I mean, it got to the point where like our hitting coach that was in there, they'd toss him the Evo shield, like their elbow guards. And mm-hmm. he dropped it one time and then she went yard. And then he dropped it again. And I'm like, watch right now, watch. And she goes yard and we go crazy. And like, that's the fun part of it all. That's juice right there, man. These stupid little games and like superstitions. People argue they're not real. We'll argue they're real. But it's like at the end of the day, it's like just crazy when it lines up because it makes it that much more fun. Oh my God. It makes it so much more fun. It's absolutely electric. I will give college softball. College softball has the juice. (laughs) College softball has the juice. It is. I mean, realistically, I'm trying to think. This college baseball has been pretty pretty electrifying. March Madness gets pretty electrifying. Mm-hmm. College softball starting. It started to get up in like the rankings somewhere. Oh yeah, it's got the juice. It does. It's I got mean, the college juice. baseball. It's hard too because like I tried to watch the World Series, especially when Texas was in it. Cause, yeah, like, you got to support. Yeah, yeah. The games are just so long. Nine innings and like the thing that a lot of fans like too is like with softball games. Just regardless of sport, you're seeing these pitchers that are throwing. Innings on innings on innings on innings. And then it's like baseball, your favorite pitcher might throw Friday. Well, now he's got five days off. Right. So you're not going to see him until the following Friday. And if they don't have a good performance, it's like, well, this was a bummer. You came to watch your favorite right. pitcher. And that's sometimes where the fan base has come from. But yeah, tech like baseball wise, it was fun to go to a few games because the environment for like even Texas baseball, their fans are crazy. Right. And like for us, I mean, as girls, we're always like, build us a stadium this big. We'll fill it up. Uh-huh. Like we're selling out all the time. Like. Let us try. Like, give us the option. We had 13,000 seats available at the World Series. They're sold. Right. Doesn't matter whose team. They're fans of softball. I mean, you guys like, did get to play in... It was the Red River rivalry as the World Series. As they say. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that was crazy shit. I mean, everybody hates Texas. That's hey, what I learned. They hate us because they ain't us. That's one of those things. <laughs> That's what I learned. I didn't aware... I was not aware of any situations like that until everywhere I'm walking, I'm getting horns down. Like, in Arkansas, wow. people are honking. In, in Seattle, like someone stops my dad. They're like, huh, so when's Texas going to get a football team? And that's like, I don't know, their schedule's out. Like, <laughs> it's like, I'm here for softball. Like, right? I don't care. And that's like, I think a lot of people, it's one of the baseball players said it perfectly. It's like the fact that they're doing horns down, like it'd be like doing dogs down almost. Yeah. They think our mascot, whatever saying is like, so great they have to do it yeah <laughs> like they have live to live rent their own free way. in their head yeah and that's exactly it and that's what one of the guys said and i hadn't thought about it that way but i'm like that's exactly it i'm like right. why are you posing with like the national championship trophies doing horns down right what why were we in your head yeah it's why like not just, why not sooner up or something exactly like yeah Boomer. <laughs> yeah whatever that means yeah <laughs> so you mentioned your health you mentioned your love for softball all that good stuff you brought up a few times that it's over. I know that you talked at one point that, hey, you might make an Olympic run. You could go professionally. Um, why does it have to be over? I think for me, it's one of those like when you know, you know. Yeah. Like I know that my body is done. Uh-huh. And I know that like, and that's the best part is I have no regrets. I could not have trained any harder. I could not have done any other workouts. Like that's the best part about knowing is like I gave everything I had to the off season, in season training, all of it. And so thinking about putting my body through another off season training, is just not happening. Yeah. Like it's not feasible mentally. I just don't think, I think I'm just exhausted. I mean, it's been like the best five years, but it's like taking a toll mentally of like, Oh my God, I can breathe. Like I can take a summer and go visit my friends. I don't have to worry about a strict bullpen schedule. I work out when I want, I do what I want. And so it's like, that's kind of freeing in itself too. So what's next? Go finish my master's degree. GA and kind of see the other side of all the operations of softball, especially getting to do it at Texas is like great experience. All the resources potentially kind of see how it works in our athletics department. If I want to go that route and then mm. maybe move back to the Valley. Oh, five, five Niners <laughs> stand up. You might see Haley <laughs> at a football game this year. Uh, so last thing, what is like, how can I put this? You've always been a huge ambassador of Bring the Juice, which I know it's because we're friends, but I also, we watch you on TV and like, you're yelling at people, you're pissed <laughs> off, like, you're striking someone out, be like, 
sit the fuck down. <laughs> like, you're getting after their ass. Jake, we're gonna have to clip something in because she gets really angry. <laughs> I do not get angry. She, you get, you get, it, get you show up. emotion. Get you get up. fired up. <laughs> you get fired up. And juice is juiced it, up. Yeah, there we you go. You are. Okay, so how would you define juice? Ooh. Ooh. This might be a common question on bringing juice now. I've asked my last like four guests this. Yeah, you have to ask at the end, I feel like. How would I define what juice is? Because you get It's like energy, mm. but it's a different kind of energy. It's internal. It's like not everybody has it. Not everybody has it. That's the best part about it. You either have it or you don't. Yeah, it's like you know how to control your adrenaline in a sense like you know when to get yeah. juiced up per se. Yeah. Like, and when you get fired up, get you bring the juice, everyone around you is fired up and it's like- It's contagious, contagious as shit. It is so contagious. And that's it, the best part is like once everybody's fired up and it's like, there is no stopping you. Oh, it's a tsunami of emotion. Like everyone should be concerned. <laughs> yeah. I love it that way. I get fired up off that type of stuff. And like, I think it's such a key element to have as an athlete or even just a person because- there is a lot of pissed off anger that's in within juice. And some people, they translate it into fist fights or uh, maybe they don't perform. They perform worse because of that inner, they can't, they can't quite control it. They can't quite harness it in. But if you could kind of just let it dive deep into your belly and be like, let okay, it fuel you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You have to use it fuel to your you. advantage. And then you just open up a can of whoop ass on somebody <laughs> and it's like, boom. That was that internal juice that I, it was a slingshot of adrenaline that is now contagious to my team, my community, my atmosphere. And hey, sports, it takes one play for shit to go absolutely sideways. You, momentum you could have shifter. All the momentum and you could swing it this way. Softballs, you get a, you get someone hits a, a homer when you guys are down. All right, little spark of life, a little bit of juice. Football, you guys are down. Someone makes a big hit, recovers a fumble. Okay. All right. We got a little bit of life in us. A little bit of lively. Because you get them on their heels a little bit uh-huh, too. Like, okay, uh-huh. they're they're knocking. And guess what? Then you're back. You're a D1 athlete too. You could do it too. Just because somebody hits a home or somebody does whatever. Guess That's what? That's the game. Gives a shit, man. They're good too. That's why they play against you at the same level. Mm-hmm. Part of the deal. I love it. I love it. I absolutely love it. I'm about to wrap it up. Haley, you got anything you want to say that brings you to nation? Keep watching, keep listening, buy your merch. Buy, wow. Buy your limited merch. edition merch. Uh-huh. Yeah. Just get after it. Bring the juice. Get after it. Bring the juice. I love it. Another great episode of the Bring the Juice podcast. We're going to be sure to tag Haley in all of the content that she is within on this episode 49. Next week, episode 50. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube page, uh, our TikTok, our Instagram, our Twitter. We have the Bring the Juice Combine coming up. Sign up. Sign up. Come win a trophy. Win some cash. Win some merch. Uh, it's going to be absolutely freaking There's electric. some 40 times I don't think you're going to be met. <laughs> Dude, there's some people saying they're going to run like four threes and I'm just, I'm like, I, I'm willing to put a thousand dollars that you won't. I, yeah, also. Yeah. There's some big talkers out there. So a lot of you big sign talkers. up. You got something to prove. <laughs> I want to see it. I want to see it. Yeah. Anyways, another great episode uh, this week. Get your piss hot. Stay fired up, baby. And uh, let's bring the juice. First we gonna fuck. Then we gonna fall. Then we let it fall.